Hi guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to 3D print maps such as these terrains, these cityscapes, or the combination of both, like this beautiful city of Heidelberg. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the terrains. The easiest way to generate your terrain model is by using this online tool here. This online tool is one of the best tools since you don't need to do a lot of post-processing to your model. It is very straightforward, which is great for beginners. Just type in the place in the search bar here. I'm going to type in Matahorn, which is one of the highest mountains of the Alps in Switzerland. Click satellite to get a satellite view of the mountains. Then you want to click recenter box on a map. You can move the box around or resize it as necessary. For the elevation data source, we're going to go for the best resolution. So let's choose this second option since we're not in the US. Then you want to choose width and I'm going to leave it at 100 millimeter. Then choose nozzle diameter. Let's go with 0.4 millimeter. For the vertical exaggeration, you can leave it at 1 if you want the accurate scale. But I like to exaggerate my terrains, so I'm going to go with a times 2. Leave everything else as is. Then click this green button and wait for it to generate your model and then download the file to your computer. Extract the folder, drag and drop the SDL file into your slicer and that's basically it. That took like literally 5 to 10 minutes to do. Now if you see this error, you can simply right click on it and select repair if you're on a PC. If you're on a Mac, you don't have that option so you're gonna need Fusion 360 to fix the model and I'm gonna show you how. But before that, let's talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers a wide variety of services, not only PCB prototype services, but they also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding services, and even 3D printing services. So you can get them to print any model in all kinds of plastic materials like a resin, ABS, to metal like aluminum, stainless steel, and even titanium. Just upload your model to PCBWay, choose your material, specify the quantity and hit submit request to get your quote. Visit PCBWay.com for more information. So to fix our model, first open Fusion 360. Go to insert and select insert mesh to import your model. Now hover to browser and click bodies. You'll see this warning symbol which implies that there is something wrong with your model. To fix it, click it. And you can choose any one of these options, but I'll just stick to stitch and repair for now. Check the preview option, and if you see this green check mark, click OK. If your model is repaired, you can no longer see the warning symbol. Save your model and drag and drop it into the slicer. If you fixed the model, you don't get the error notification anymore. One tip before you slice your model, you might want to consider printing the terrain model on its side for the best and cleanest results. If you print it flat, you kind of get that stepped terrain look where you can see these individual layers. To reposition our model, click Lay on Face, which is this button here, and select this whitish area on its side. You can also create a base like this if you want. First, you want to click on your model and then click the scale button. Take a note of the dimensions of your model, especially the X and the Y dimensions. Then open Fusion 360 and create a sketch. We're going to sketch a rectangle of that size. Then click this offset button, select that box, and I'm going to type in 5mm. That will be the wall thickness of my base. Click Finish Sketch, then click Extrude. Let's extrude the inner rectangle to 2mm. The height of the wall doesn't really matter that much for now since we can edit it in the slicer. Let's make it 10mm. Make sure the operation is set to Join and hit OK. You can also round off the edges. Just click Fill it, click this plus symbol and select all the edges. I'm going to type in 2mm. Then right click on that body in the browser, select save as mesh and save that to your computer. Now let's head back to our slicer. Right click your terrain model, select center. Then we want to drag that and drop our base into our slicer. Right click on it and hit center. If you are not happy with the wall height of your base, click the scale button and check this box and move this blue box up and down. 
And when you're happy with how that looks, go to Object, select both models, right click and select Merge. You can also paint your model with acrylic paint or with the paint tool if you have access to multicolor printing. I had some spare time to paint the model, so let's see how it turns out. That actually came out really nice. Now, if you want a quick and dirty method to print a cityscape, I recommend this website here. Just type in the place and choose your size and map scale. You can even customize other parameters by clicking show advanced options. You can even type in the coordinates of the place you want to make a model of. To look for coordinates, go to Google Maps, type in the place, right click on the map and it will show the exact coordinates for you. Note it down or just click it to copy. The first set of numbers represent Y latitude coordinate and the second represent the X longitude coordinate. Click create tactile map. Wait for a few minutes as it generates the model for you and when that's done, click this button to download the file. This is probably the best and the quickest way to print cityscapes if you don't want to deal with any 3D modeling softwares. Sure, the cityscape is rather flat and somewhat oversimplified, but the whole process takes no longer than 5 minutes and this actually look pretty good. There's another way to create cityscapes where you have more flexibility to customize your cityscape like adding terrains, adjusting the height of the roads and pathways and whatnot, which requires some basic 3D modeling skills. Now there are a lot of ways to do it and a lot of softwares you can use, but the method that I'm going to show you is more beginner friendly than the others in my opinion and it is also free. It may appear more complicated than it actually is, but don't worry, I'm going to guide you through the process and if you follow along you can create something like this. So first you want to download this free 3D modeling software called Blender and you want to install that on your computer. Then you want to download a Blender GIS plugin and you want to leave that file as a zip file. Before we start, just a quick tip for Mac users, you want to get a mouse with a scroll wheel like this since it's going to make it easier for you to use the software. A cheap mouse will do just fine. Now let's open Blender. To install the plugin, go to edit then select Preferences. Then go to Add-ons, then click Install. Select the Blender GIS plugin and hit Install Add-on. Wait for a few seconds and then you want to check this box to enable the plugin. We can now close this window. If the install is successful, you'll see this GIS button up here. Let's first delete that cube. Right click on it and select Delete. Click GIS, select Web Geodata and select Base Map. Click OK. Then hit G, type in the name of the place or city you want to make a model of, or paste in the coordinates. Let's increase the zoom value to somewhere around 18 to 20 for now. Reposition the map, zoom in or out as necessary. Wait for the data to load and hit E to get the cutout of the map. To orbit around your model, hold down the scroll wheel and drag your mouse around. To pan, hold down shift while holding down the scroll wheel at the same time. Now click GIS again, this time select Get Elevation and choose this option here. On the right panel, you'll see two windows in this Range tab. You want to go to the first window and apply the first modifier. Just click this small arrow and select Apply. Then you want to apply the second modifier as well. Select the map, then click the GIS button again and select Get OSM. Let's select everything for now and do the cleanup later. Don't forget to check this box Elevation from Object and hit OK. Now I'm going to delete all the elements that I don't need like these blobs here. Just click on it, right click and select Delete. Now let's select everything. We are now in the Object mode, so let's switch to Edit mode here. Let's cut out the part of the map that we don't need. Click this Z icon to go to the top view of your model. On the left side, look for the knife tool. You want to click it and hold for a few seconds to reveal the bisect tool and select it. Hit A, then draw a line across your model while holding the Ctrl key button. 
On the bottom left part of the screen, you can see this pop-up. Open it, choose either clear inner or clear outer. Repeat the same steps to cut out the other sides. Once you're done, you want to check for any cavity in the buildings which resulted from cutting the model earlier. To fix it, hold Option key and click on any of the edges. Hit F. Repeat the same process for all other buildings. When you're done, let's switch back to object mode. Let's select the map, switch back again to edit mode and hit A. Hit E, then hold your scroll wheel down while dragging it downwards to extrude the base. Then hit A, click the Y icon to get the side view of your model and click the bisect tool. Drag a line while holding the control key to cut the excess of that terrain. Now let's work on the roads. Switch to object mode and select the roads that you want to extrude. Let's select only the highway for now. Switch to edit mode, hit A, hit E and hold down your mouse while dragging your mouse up. You don't want to extrude the roads too high. Then switch back to object mode again. Go to the right panel and click add modifier in this wrench tab. Select generate and select solidify. Change the thickness of the roads here. Let's hit apply. Finally, let's export our model. In the file menu, select export, then SDL and you want to save that to your computer. Now, there is a high chance that your model will get an error notification in the slicer, so you might want to fix your model in Fusion 360. I find that using the wrap option to fix the model works most of the time for me, but if it doesn't, you can try out all of these other options. So I hope this tutorial is helpful, and if you know any other ways to create these 3D maps, just let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you guys next time.